Being a YouTube superstar comes with great responsibility. I have no idea what those responsibilities are. A week or so ago, I did a video on the TID Radio Bluetooth Radio Programmer. This little $25 miracle of modern technology is a $25 miracle of modern technology. To see more about this little Bluetooth wireless radio programmer, watch that video there. Well, the people at TID Radio must have wondered why they suddenly had a thousand orders for this little miracle of modern technology, and they tracked me down. And of course, realizing what an influencer I am and what power I have over all of YouTube, they offered to send me anything I want to share with you, my favorite viewer. And after looking through their website, excitedly looking through their website, I found this. The TID Radio TD H5 GMRS handheld radio. The TD H5 costs $79 for a set of two. Affiliate link below. That's only $40 per radio, but wait, there's much more that comes in the box with the TD H5. More than just two radios. This is a value pack of radios. And if you stick around, I'm going to show you everything that it comes with. I'm going to read you a list of some of the features, the ones that interested me, that I think will interest you. I'm not just reading off the Amazon page. The TDH5 is a 5 watt handheld. We're going to test that. It does support repeater split tones. It is repeater capable and supports split tones. Many radios don't. It has the DIY channels so that you can have multiple repeaters on the same frequency using the same tone, but because they use the DIY type, there's only a couple of sets of how many, it's limited to how many additional repeaters you can have with the same tones, but it does do it. Many radios do not do that. It does do scanning. It has a VFO mode, so you can scan any frequency from 100. I have to read it. I have to read from my notes because if I make any minor little minute detail, the know-it-alls are going to be tripping all over themselves to leave a comment to point out the mistake that I made. I'm reduced to reading from my notes. Any frequency between uh, on VHF between 136 and 174 megahertz and UHF 400 to 512 megahertz. So you can use it as an emergency scanner. Now many experts in the online forums and on YouTube comments, like on my videos, will point out that you can't scan anything unless it's a digital radio all Emergency services are encrypted and blah, blah, blah. If you want to know exactly what you actually can or cannot scan and what I listen to and what I scan in my area, watch that video. It is a great example of proving the experts wrong. The TDH5 has dual scan, so you can monitor two different frequencies at the same time, which can be both helpful and confusing. It has channel sync. Many radios don't do this. I'll, I'll show you what that means. I'll show you what that means. It can scan all the NOAA weather channels. And in the manual, it says it does channel hopping. Channel hopping is a feature that when you're talking, it doesn't transmit on one frequency, it hops around, making it very difficult for somebody to monitor what you're saying. Of course, the radio that you're talking to also has to support channel hopping. So we're gonna test that and see just how well that works. And of course, I'll do a power output test and a range test. I'm gonna be doing all of this and keeping this video short and to the point because I don't waste your time like other YouTubers do because I know that your time is very valuable. And of course, you are my favorite viewer. So when you purchase the TDH5 in the box, you will receive a quick start guide Quick Start User's Guide, not for how to use the radio, but for how to get it set up and working on your computer to program with your computer. Step by step, what to download, where to go to get the software, how to set it up, very useful. Now, I'm a very strong believer that you should always program your radios by hand, the manly way, so that if you're ever actually outdoors or in an emergency situation using the radio, you're not reliant on a computer, which may be at home when you're outdoors and you don't have your computer. So I didn't actually use the software. Everything I've done today, I programmed repeaters and everything I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do it by hand, the manly way. You will receive a user guide, well-written, lots of information. There's no page numbers, son of a bitch. No page numbers, so I don't know how long, how many pages it is. It's 50 or 40 
pages. It is well written in good English. You can tell a lot about a radio manufacturer and how good the radio is by how much time and effort they put into the manual. Tid Radio put some effort into this manual. You will receive a programming cable, which I did not use because I programmed the radio the manly way by hand. And this is where the value of this radio, two radios for only $79 affiliate link below. This is where some of the value starts to come in. It comes with the programming cable. Many radios do not come with a programming cable. You will receive two USB chargers with regular USB-A plugs. You will receive two USB-A to dual USB-C charging cables. So you've got the USB-A which plugs into the charger like this. And on the other end, there are two USB-C plugs, two plugs, two of those. You will receive two very handsome wrist straps, one for each radio. You will receive two belt clips, which attach to the battery, not the radio itself, which is a big drawback for many people. I personally don't care, but the belt clips will allow you to attach the radio to your belt so that you can impress the chicks. You will receive two extension microphones, one for each radio. The microphones also have a clip that you can attach to your shirt or your belt to impress the chicks. The clip is removable. It has a little clip that you pull on or push on, there you go. So that is removable. Two of those in the box. You will receive not one, not two, not three, but four, four batteries for your two radios. And if you do the math, that means you get one extra battery or two batteries for each radio. This is where you can begin to see the value of this set of radios. They are 1500 milliamp hour batteries and they are USB-C chargeable. And because it comes with four, it now makes sense why there are two USB plugs at the end of each charging cable so that you can charge two batteries at once. One might say you could do a charging twosome. And of course, you will receive the TID Radio TDH5, not one, but two. Now you may notice that it looks very similar to another GMRS radio that I reviewed just in the last few months. and. Can you hear that? Do you hear that sound? That is the sound of know-it-alls across the internet falling all over themselves to leave a comment to say, that looks just like my blah, blah, whatever radio you review. We know. Companies often share manufacturers or rebrand radios with their own little tweaks on them. It's okay. It's normal. If you're a know-it-all, you don't need to leave a comment pointing that out because most normal people don't care, but it's okay because you're gonna get a gold star for the day anyway. So yes, it does look very much like another radio that I have reviewed in the past. The radios come with the antenna attached and they have a set screw, a torque screw or Allen screw in the hole there that you'd have to remove to or loosen to get the antenna off. I don't know why they do that. I guess they do that to prevent it from coming loose during any vigorous activity. And when you remove that antenna, you'll find that the antenna has a SMA male and the radio has a SMA female, which is opposite of most handheld radios. And taking a tour of the radio, you have the on off knob. It does have a flashlight. It has a transmit and receive light. Of course, this is where the antenna goes. It's got buttons here that you use uh, to, to, uh, for monitoring, to turn off the squelch and to go into uh, FM mode. Push to talk, push that button there to do your talking. On the side, is where the either your programming cable goes or your external microphone. The radio comes with two external microphones. If I didn't mention that, you don't have to use these. These are optional, but it would plug in right there. And it's got your menu cancel buttons and your keypad like pretty much any other radio. And the battery is easy to get on and off. To release it, you just pull down the little button there with your fingernail and it pops right off. 
Ah, uh, she does sound nice. The operation is pretty much like any other radio. You can scan through the VFO frequencies. You can set channels to scan. You can scan through the, uh, the NOAA frequencies, or you can save the NOAA frequencies as channels and scan only through them. Very versatile. It's got that stupid alarm. I was trying to show you the FM radio. There we go. Uh, I had no idea what the Song of Solomon was. <laughs> Didn't know where to find it in my she Bible. It was a rock group. <laughs> so I can listen to what Xenu is up to. The screen is very bright. I took it outside into the direct sunlight. It works very well in the direct... Oh, gosh. I forgot. I know you didn't want to miss this. Oh, baby. Very bright, works great in direct sunlight. It is a high resolution screen. It's easy to read and a pleasure to use. Now, one of the things I mentioned in the intro or at some point in the past was the, uh, it does dual monitor. So I can scan or listen to two frequencies at once. So right now I'm on, let's say, channel, uh, GMRS channel 21, and I'm also, it's listening on 462675, which is GMRS channel, I don't know, some other GMRS channel. You can set the display to show the channel numbers or the frequency numbers. I've set it to display the channel number on the top line and the frequency on the bottom line because I have many friends that are ham radio operators and they use their illegally modified ham radios to talk on GMRS. For some reason, it's okay for the ham radio operators to do things like that, but it's not okay for them. Anyway, so one of the things I mentioned was the channel sync. So I don't like to listen to two frequencies at the same time because I'm just a simple boy and I get confused easily. So I like to disable the dual scanning because what will happen is I'm listening to two channels. I hear somebody talking to me on one channel and I try to transmit back on the other channel. And then the person on the other channel says, why are you talking to me? And it just, it's too confusing for my brain. So what this radio allows you to do is go into menu option number 41 and turn sync on. Now I'm listening to only one channel or one frequency at a time. And when I change channels, it shows me the GMRS channel number and the frequency that that GMRS channel is uses. So that's how I've set the radio up because that's how I prefer it. The other feature of this radio that I was very interested in was the frequency hopping. And frequency hopping is when you're talking, say you're talking on GMRS channel one, but you're not actually talking on GMRS channel one, the frequency is changing while you're talking. You're on one frequency and another frequency, and then the radio that you're listening to at the other end, you'd have to turn on the same option with the same settings. It's listening at the same time on those other frequencies. This makes it very difficult for someone to monitor you. Not that you would ever be in a situation where you didn't want anyone to listen to you. So I was eager to try frequency hopping. So I went into menu number 39 and I turned on, it's off now. I go to turn it on and save it. Cancel. Ooh, she says cancel. So maybe I didn't hit the button hard enough, so I try it again. Turn on frequency hopping. Cancel. When I try to turn frequency hopping on, all it tells me is cancel. That's the equivalent of the screw you tone on other radios. So no matter what I did, I could not get the frequency hopping option to turn on. So in a situation like this, I resort to reading the manual, which I know all of you always do. And the manual says, menu option 39, frequency hopping system, hopping RX, menu number 39. With this function, you can activate the frequency hopping system, improve the anti-interference ability of the radio, and reduced the risk of being monitored. Sounds great, but I tried it in VFO mode. I tried it on all channels. It won't turn on. I'm guessing it's probably because I think that might not be legal on GMRS, and it's probably a leftover feature from, remember I mentioned earlier that many radio manufacturers share manufacturers and vendors, and they'll take one radio and customize it. I think that might be a leftover feature. If that's the case, TID Radio, I know you're listening. Take that out of the manual or make it work, or put more information in the manual to let us know how to make it work. That'd be a great feature. Now, the big question, amongst all the other questions, is how many FARs can I talk? And with this radio, like with most handheld radios, you can talk many FARs. So I have my friend Chris, 10 miles, I think it's 10.1 miles away. He is listening for me right now. So let's see if this radio can talk 10 miles. 
Chris. Do you copy? Yes, sir, I copy. And how do I sound on the TID radio TDH5 handheld radio? How do I sound on it? You sound 100% clear, sir. No static behind you. Copy that. Thank you very much. 10 miles, no problem. Now he's using, uh, he's got an external antenna up on his roof. It is 10 miles, but I am slightly more elevated than him. So there's not much in between us other than some trees and a few buildings. It is mostly line of sight, but can it hit a repeater 69 miles away? So I've programmed in by hand a repeater, one of my favorite repeaters, 69 miles away. Again, I'm up high. It is also up. All the know-it-alls out there. You don't need to leave a comment saying that it's impossible to talk 69 miles because the curvature of the earth, blah, blah, blah. I'm up high. The other repeater is up high. It is very possible, not only possible, but easy to talk 69 miles. So let's see if we can hit that repeater 69 miles away. If I hit it, we'll get the kickback. We'll get the little uh, green light turning on and we'll hear the little kickback. Repeater check. Hits that repeater, no problem, 69 miles away. So with this radio, you can talk many fars. TID Radio says that the radio outputs 5 watts. Let's test that. I've got my new handy-dandy power meter, an SWR meter. The last time I did a power test, it caused much confusion because I did not clearly explain exactly what I'm doing here and how I'm doing it. So allow me to clearly explain. I'm using the Surecom SW102 power and SWR meter connected to my something brand, I don't remember the brand, 50 watt dummy load so that whatever I transmit won't get out into the air. Experts, know-it-alls, we know, yes, some electricities and RF energies will leak out into the air, but generally speaking, I'm not really transmitting because this is a dummy load and not an antenna because this is a dummy load when we see the SWR, which will show on the meter, along with the power, the SWR will read perfect 1.01 .01 or 1.0 to 1. It's because it's not an antenna, it's a dummy load. That's just how it works. I don't know why. I don't care. Let's warm up the Surecom meter. By the way, you can get both this Surecom meter and the dummy load at the affiliate links below. Okay, so let's go to channel 1, which is a high power channel. The reason I'm Gonna, I'm going to check on different channels because most radios will output a different, will have a different power level output at a low frequency versus a higher frequency. A radio can't, most radios don't generally have the same power output across the entire band. There'll be a center frequency that it's got the most power and then it kind of falls off in each direction. So I'm going to go at channel one, channel 16, and then we'll do a repeater channel, which transmits at five megahertz up higher at four, six, seven. It, so we're going to do three different channels. So channel one, let's see what we got. And that is reading 3.5 watts, a little lower than we'd hope to see. Let's go to channel 16. Channel 16, we get 3.5 watts, still lower than we'd like to see. Let's go up to a repeater channel and let's see what we get. 3.12, not quite the five watts that we were hoping for. Now, in reality, the difference between a three watt output and five watt output, you're never gonna notice the difference. If anything, the battery's gonna last longer because it's only outputting three watts instead of five watts. However, TID Radio, if the box says five watts, I expect five watts. But as you can see, even with that only, that three watts, Chris at 10 miles away said I sounded fine. And that repeater at 69 miles away still heard me just fine. So the question is, should you buy the TID Radio TDH5 radio? It's actually two radios and four batteries and two external microphones and a programming cable. And my answer is yes, it's a good value. It does everything it does except for frequency hopping, which most of you probably don't care about. And the power output is a little low, not exactly what the box says, but it still works quite well. And it's all a good value at only $79 for the whole package. Affiliate link below. So yes, good radio, not a Rubicon Productions approved. If you have questions about the TDH5 or if I missed something, 
leave a comment below. This channel follows the MIGA rules. We are part of the MIGA movement. If you don't know what MIGA means, check that link. But basically, stupid comments, inaccurate comments, dickhead comments will be deleted. But the best of the stupidity, the most stupid, the most biggest dickheadedness comment will be pinned to the top for everybody to marvel at and make fun of. Thank you for watching. Most people don't make it this far. Most people bail out much earlier. The ADD tards, they can't make it this far. It's just you and me now. Everybody else has left. And I just want you to know that you are still my favorite.